Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 1, Episode 11. Today we're going to be talking about this crazy episode. Now, why do I say it's crazy? Because if you watched it, this is mainly an origin episode, and it's freaking fantastic. Like, it's one of the best episodes of the whole show, if not maybe the best episode. And the way that it ends has got people losing their minds. So we got to break down this episode and like go through everything. So I've got so many notes. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new. So you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So we're not going to jump the gun and go to the crazy kind of revelations just yet. We're going to go through it bit by bit chronologically talk about every major point throughout this episode, what I thought about it, what it means for the future, and we can theorize about a lot of this stuff. I mean, that's basically what we do in these videos. So hopefully you go on to enjoy it and stick around for the whole video. So let's go ahead and start at the start. So Clark flashes back to when he created the Fortress of Solitude. So he throws a rock into the ground. He doesn't know what is gonna happen. He's basically given up at this point, but that's when the Fortress forms once the rock hits that ground. And so great CGI as always, and it was just fantastic to look at. And you had the cave being formed and then Clark finally meets his Kryptonian father when he steps inside the Fortress of Solitude. Also, it's revealed he could have created that fortress anywhere. It's just so happened he went to there and that's where his fortress is. And so he finds out that he was born on Krypton and that he is the last son from the House of El. He finds out about his powers, about why he's special under the Yellow Sun compared to people from Earth. Obviously, that is due to his Kryptonian DNA and the way that it reacts to the Yellow Sun radiation cells. And that powers him and gives him his powers and that's why all of the other Kryptonians do have powers as well so it is a fantastic way to tell an origin by flashing back and having the whole episode without explaining anything like just going straight back to there and we kind of accept it and I kind of forgot that we were in the midst of this bigger story with Morgan Edge because you had this episode that felt very contained but then at the end like just like maybe three quarters of the way stuff starts getting revealed and you realize oh there is something greater going on here and so we get this great montage of him becoming older and him practicing and using his powers surrounding the Fortress of Solitude, like this one shot where he's running and then he turns into Superman, you know, Tyler Hoechlin does, and he shows up and then he flies and he seems really happy and then he goes back to the Fortress and he returns to his father and he wishes to enter or re-enter the normal world to become Earth's champion. And so it's at this point that Clark reunites with his mum. We saw this a couple of episodes back, I don't know, I think it was like five episodes ago, where we had some flashbacks to young Clark, and so he leaves his mum after his father dies, and so Clark finds out at this point, when he goes and he's like, oh, I need to see one last person, he finds out that Lana is in fact with Kyle, and so that sort of ties up that bow of what happened between them. And so Martha made Clark his Superman cape and I thought that was a really cool moment and I was like of course she did it and she talks about like how she had a dream and you know she had this premonition that she had to make this for him and at this point Martha says it's time for you to go save the world Clark and he goes to Metropolis this is where he starts his new life and so Clark becomes Superman for the first time he suits up and saves a kid and this is the scene that we saw in the first episode of the season. So it was great to go back to it because everyone was freaking out about that scene with his classic Superman suit and the homage they paid to the original Action Comics cover is just amazing. We've talked about that before. But anyway, so this continues right after that scene and one of my favorite scenes of the whole episode and one of my favorite scenes of the whole season is this. And so this lady runs past and she comes back and Clark comes out of the phone booth and she's like, some guy just saved the kid from dying and then he flew up into the sky like a bird or like a plane. And so Clark is like kind of reacting to that and at the point he looks up into the sky and there is a bird and he flies off. And so I just thought that was one of the best scenes and obviously me describing it does no justice. So I'm sure you guys have seen the episode and you remember the scene. But that scene gave me chills. I was so excited when that happened. So yeah, she mentions the Daily Planet and Clark goes, looks up and then he heads into an interview because he realizes maybe this could be a place where I could live my life and, you know, find a purpose essentially in Metropolis. 
and so Lois and Clark meet for the first time. It's a lovely scene and the first look is fantastic when they first meet each other. And we saw this scene before, but seeing it again and extending on that relationship and how they first got to know each other is great. And so Lois gets annoyed by the Superman coverage in the Daily Planet because everyone's trying to get those stories. But it's hiding other stories in the meantime, so people are glossing over some important issues. And so it's at this point that Superman, aka Clark, realizes he has to help Lois. And so they form a bond over time with this great montage as they go out, they work together on crime scenes, they try and find out who this kind of guy is who has the flamethrower. Obviously, he has a strong relation to the organization that shall not be named. But with the two lightning bolt symbols, you know what that means in the Arrowverse. Obviously, they don't want to use the proper symbols. But yeah, so Lois comes face to face with that guy who has the flamethrower as she nearly gets scorched by it. But Superman steps in and saves her and takes those flames. And so this is the first time that Lois and Superman meet for the first time in real life rather than just like seeing him fly or on the newspaper or something like that. And so this is where their bond starts to grow. And obviously it grows beyond that when she realizes who Superman actually is, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so Lois tasers the guy, they stop him, and Superman does some Superman stuff, and it was fantastic, that scene with the two grenades, and he saves everyone, thinking on the spot really fast. Obviously, whilst he's all doing this, he sports the classic Superman suit, and I love that suit, so I really like that we got to spend like half the episode with Tyler in that old suit. So Superman and Lois, they shake hands for the first time and they have a little chit chat just for one or two seconds and the question about what he's called comes up and Clark is like, you'll come up with a name. And then just right after that, a guy comes up behind Lois and asks, who was that? And Lois answers, Superman. And that was just a great moment as well. So, okay. Now this is really cool, they go into an interview scene at the Daily Planet, so Lois sits down for Superman and this is the first time that anyone in the world has sat down and talked to him face to face and this is on live television, obviously it's going out to the whole world, to all of America to see. And so she asks lots of questions about his origins, where he came from, how long has he been on Earth, like is he American? Like, what's he been doing all this time? And he's a bit reluctant to reveal everything, but he does reveal he's from Krypton, he reveals he was sent here to be Earth's protector, and when asked what does Superman stand for, he says truth, justice, and Lois continues by saying the American way. Obviously, that is the signature Superman slogan of what he stands for, and so that was a really nice moment. And then, just as this happens, Lois's mic starts glitching out and Lois reveals to her friend Janet, who is her friend and a producer at the Daily Planet, that she's in love with Clark and this happens as she sees some sort of connection between Lois and Superman. Obviously, we know that's there because he is Clark after all, but Lois doesn't know that at this point and so Superman uses his super hearing and listens in and it's just a really good scene. And I like the way that they shot it, it was really cool with the 4x3 aspect ratio as well. Cutting to later, sometime in the next week or so, I would presume Lois meets Clark's mum as they travel to Smallville. And obviously they didn't fly there, they went by car or whatever, it's pretty far away. However, Clark reveals that he is Superman at this point after Lois has met his mum for the first time. And Clark previously had like a mini conversation with his mum that this was the reason why he brought Lois out to Smallville. And so it's at this point where you get that revelation where Lois sees Clark flying into the sky for the first time, very similar to how Clark revealed that he was Superman to his sons at the start of this season. And so just like Fight Club, there's flashes of Morgan Edge popping up regularly. I thought that was an interesting signifier that something was going wrong but you never understood what exactly it was throughout this episode and like I said, they did such a good job absorbing all of us into the episode and into this specific origin story that we kind of forget we're in this greater story and this is actually Morgan Edge orchestrating this whole episode so far. And so this is at the point that Superman finally wakes up from Edge's dream, he's using some sort of Kryptonian technology and Edge at this point threatens his family and he says that he's going to kill them if he doesn't submit to him and his plans. And so then we go back and we're back in Smallville. You have Jordan and Sarah and also Jonathan. They have a little chat. And then finally you get the reveal that Jordan and Sarah are going to be together. This is something that they 
have led up to for quite a long time. Literally every single episode there's been little hints towards this actually happening, but now it finally is happening, and it feels right. It feels good. So, you know, I'm excited for that. We'll see what happens next. But Uncle Morgan pays a visit to the Kent family home as they think that Superman has returned, but it turns out Superman is not back and it is Morgan Edge. And I really like that he said Uncle Morgan. I don't know, it was just very funny. And so you have Superboy versus Morgan. And I'm willing to bet that by the end of the season, maybe Jordan does get a superhero suit as he fights off against, say, Superman, who, spoiler alert, is going to turn evil. So let's go ahead and get into this. So you have Morgan actually confronting the super family. And at this point, Superman shows up. He is completely out of breath. He has got no energy at all. And Superman submits to Morgan and his plans. And he promises to do whatever he asks of him as long as Morgan spares his family. And obviously Lois is completely against this because she knows something terrible is gonna happen if he listens to Edge, but Superman being Superman, he thinks of his family first, but it's having serious consequences because we go to Morgan's Desert Fortress of Solitude, and it's at this point you see how it was built in the first place with him pushing the stone down and then seeing his father and the way that he was treated when he was younger and the way that he is expected to be on Earth is completely different and completely the opposite from how Kal-El was raised by his Kryptonian father who is obviously a hologram as well and there is lots of similarities but they're on two complete opposite ends and so at this point Superman becomes evil and this ending was fantastic and I really wasn't expecting it so Superman essentially is pretty much dead because it is not him anymore, he is taken over and he is more like the version that we've been seeing recently on John Henry Irons' Earth because the way that his eyes glow entirely reminds you of that Superman. And it must be noted that anything Clark does, that's going to be because of their control and what they've done to him. However, he is evil Superman after all. And just as this happens, it cuts back and forth between Superman becoming who he is now and Lois calling John Henry Irons, saying that what he warned about is happening right now. And so this is what we're leading up to, this big climactic battle with Superman actually turning evil. And this is where I'm willing to bet that Superboy is going to step up at some point and probably face off against Superman. I'm sure I'll do a video on that sometime, maybe later this week, because I think that's a very interesting concept now that we don't have normal Superman, we have an evil version of him. So who is going to be the one, apart from still, that is going to stand up to Superman? So obviously Lois is going to be there the whole way, and I'm sure she's going to have some way to get through to Clark. However, I think Superboy is going to have to become Superboy. You know, I'm talking about Jonathan here, but just referring to him as Superboy because I feel like he is going to maybe make that transformation sometime soon. But that's about it for today's video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Leaving a like really does help the video get spread around and so lots of people can see it. Also subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any videos. Obviously I'm going to have my Flash Godspeed trailer breakdown out later tomorrow. But for now, you can watch my flash review from last night by clicking on the top right corner of the screen. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.